Welcome back. Um, I wanted to do a video because somebody asked me a question, uh, kind of an interesting question um, that had nothing to do with really anything trucking related, but it made me think uh, of a topic. So as I always say, please ask your questions. Um, and sometimes if, if it's an interesting question or it, it'll it'll be a topic that spurs something in my brain that says, hey, maybe I should do a video uh, about this subject. So um, somebody asked what type of sunglasses I was wearing. <laughs> and it made me think, you know, what if I did an EDC video? And uh, if you're not familiar with the concept of EDC, it's everyday carry. Um, a lot of people do videos or... Um, uh, there are people who, who popularize everyday carry, which is what, what do you carry with you on a daily basis? Um, they'll do pocket dumps. They'll take pictures of what they carry in its wallets and watches and um, things along those lines. But I, I thought, what if I did a video of all the stuff that I feel as though is an everyday necessity? Um... Now, a couple of these things I don't use every single day, but I include it if, if it's a possibility that I will need it every single day. Uh, most of these I do use on a daily basis. So um, I want to start out by talking about um, the difference that these are the things that I use on my truck that if you're coming to Prime as a Prime student driver, uh, if you're going through the training program to get your CDL, you really don't need most of these. Um, you're, you're, some of them are personal items that I have that, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you my wallet and, and all that. You know, I don't want to get too in-depth, uh, you know, I'm not going to, whatever. Um, so some of them you're going to want as just an individual. You may want to have them. But a lot of them are things that once you have your own truck, you're going to want. So I just wanted to quickly touch on when you're a prime student driver, I've talked about this before in other videos, but I'll touch on it again. You don't want to take too much stuff with you. So I'm going to show some stuff that I carry or, or have with me. And I, I, I hesitate to, to use that term EDC everyday carry because I don't carry, it's not stuff that I have on my body. I don't have a bag. It's stuff that's in my truck because my truck's always with me. Um, so it's stuff that I find important to have with me as I'm doing my job in my quote unquote office, which is the truck. And you know, there's little nooks and crannies and shelves and, and all that stuff. When you are in the Prime Student Driver program, everything that you have, for the most part, is going to be in a bag, and it's going to be on the top bunk, which is right about here, you know, back here, uh, in, in a condo truck or a full-size truck, and you're going to be sleeping with that bag at your feet or next to you or or whatever. If you're lucky, you're going to have a, uh, a trainer or a uh, instructor who has a cabinet Many of these trucks have two or three cabinets uh, towards the back, the little closets, and they may have one set aside just for you as a student. So it behooves you to take as little as possible a week's worth of clothing. Now, one of the difficulties with that is you may start training. I started training in January and I didn't finish until May. So you have to start out with winter clothes. And by May, it could be 80 or 90 degrees. And even in that, I started out in January in Springfield, Missouri. It was in the 50s. I left a place where I'd just gotten a foot of snow in, in northern Michigan from my home. And then two or three weeks into training, I was in Texas in Fort Worth and it was 80 degrees. So you do have to be able to plan for uh, extremes in, in weather. So just a quick word on clothing and the things you need to bring with you. You don't need to bring tons and tons of clothes. You don't need to bring your Xbox if you're into gaming. I mean, um, the odds that you'll be able to use it are, are not very good. So here's what I have. Here are the things that I use on essentially a daily basis. And we're going to start with 
my phone. It's what I use to uh, record all my videos. Um, it is invaluable uh, when you are out and about. Um, it's your lifeline. Obviously, you use it to make phone calls. Prime has an app. I have, uh, I'm an Android person. I, I have a Samsung uh, Galaxy 9 Plus. Um, not only does Prime have an app, each of the major truck stops, TA, Petro, um, they have their own app. Uh, Loves has an app, and Pilot Flying J has an app. Um, uh, Trucker Path is a fantastic app. Waze is a fantastic app. Google Maps is a fantastic app. Uh, there are a number of things that you can do on your phone that will help you uh, with your job. As always, be aware of the fact that you, if you use your phone while you are driving, uh, you will get a ticket. And um, I, I've talked about it before. It's it's for a commercial motor vehicle. Uh, operating commercial motor vehicle while, while using a cell phone is like a $13,000 ticket. It's $3,175 to the driver. And it's $10,000 to the company. And in this case, if Prime gets a bill for $10,000, they are going to say, Hey, John Ogren, I got a bill and we're going to pass it right along to you. So that will be $13,175 that I would owe for operating a cell phone while driving a commercial motor vehicle. So don't do it. But when you're stopped, obviously a very invaluable piece uh, of equipment. Next thing, Bluetooth headset, because you don't want to be holding that cell phone to your ear, dialing on it, any of that stuff. Um, if you aren't familiar, I, I have done a video on this. This is the uh, Blue Parrot um, 450 Plus. I've been absolutely thrilled with this model. Um, this, I had the th the 350. I had have had two 350s. Um, they did not hold up very well. This one has been exceptional the sound quality is fantastic probably the biggest uh downside that i can say is let's see if i can grab them the ear pads i had to purchase replacement ear pads i used to use the foam ear pads they fall apart um so i have gone to using uh the fake leather ear pads and these are holding up significantly better um than the others but this is what i use all the time to talk on the phone fantastic sound quality um can't recommend it enough i've done a video on my gps before and i have recently replaced my gps um i did a video on the Rand mcnally tnd 730 um two months ago started to have some problems with the, the 730. And it started giving me the wrong date. Uh, so it was in April. And it started telling me that it was September of the year 2099. <laughs> um, went online, did some research. This seemed to be a problem. Ram McNally was promising a fix. Uh, update never came. Uh, suddenly, it started showing the wrong uh, time occasionally. So I'd be in the Eastern time zone. It would be displaying Central time zone. I got four years out of that unit. I decided to purchase a new one. So I purchased the TND 740, which is the newest one. This model, this version, um, is a lot more like a uh, tablet. It runs on Android. Um, if you, you know, go through some of these uh, buttons, you know, you try to upgrade. Um, you know, it's hooked to the Wi-Fi here at the terminal. It's searching for, um, and it says your system's up to date. It's hooked up to the Wi-Fi at the terminal here. Um, you know, it, it 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 does a lot of the things. It looks a lot more like a Android and when it starts up it has an Android screen to start up as opposed to a lot of the standalone GPS's which is again what I had before the 730 that's all it was was 
you know, you pull up the, the calculator on this unit, it looks exactly like the calculator on my phone um, because it's running Android. So I've uh, been very happy. This is a nicer model, um, much happier with this one. Uh, really, I, I wasn't, I shouldn't say that. I, I was not displeased with the 730, um, but again, after four years, it started having problems with date and time. And when you're using the GPS for estimated time of arrival, uh, that is a problem. <laughs> so, um, so there you go. So that's another piece that is uh, daily, daily use. I have saved every place that I have ever gone, um, with prime as a address book, uh, location and they're all in there. Um, so there you go. I wanted to talk briefly about clothing. And I know I said something about clothing at the beginning of this video in, in prime student driver, but there are a couple of clothing pieces I did want to mention. Safety vest. This safety vest is four and a half years old. If you come to Prime through the Prime Student Driver program, you will get a yellow safety vest. Um, actually, you might get it even if you come if you already have. To walk around uh, the yard at Prime, they're going to make you have... Uh, a yellow vest when you're doing the training and, and taking the test and all that stuff. There are some receivers and shippers that require you to wear a safety vest. So I wear this whenever I have to go to those places. It stays up here. Um, so I've shown the shelves that are, uh, you know, I, I'm hung this up here. My, my Bluetooth hangs up here off on this left side. I have my yellow safety vest. Also in that same location, this is a full-fledged raincoat. This is not, you know, this is heavy duty, double overlapping button raincoat. Um, doing tanker, you're gonna have to stand outside for an hour at a time. Uh, you can get, and this lives in the same spot up here on this shelf just tucked in the corner uh, i highly 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 recommend a legitimate raincoat as opposed to you know a lightweight jacket of some kind that is going to soak through um if you're standing outside for an hour and it's raining um, i also have pants i didn't grab them but i do have rain pants waterproof rain pants if it's pouring, I'm going to be wearing the raincoat and the rain pants um, because you're going to be out there for an hour. Um, final clothing piece, and this is something you can purchase in the Prime store, not this exact model, um, but a hard hat. They have the more basic, I, I just happen to like the style of the full brim, kind of a lineman's style hard hat. Um, Again, there are shippers and receivers that require you to wear a hard hat. Um, and the places that require PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, safety vest, hard hat, steel toe boots. That's the other one that um, I didn't, I don't have pulled out. If you go to a shipper or receiver that requires those articles of clothing and you don't have them, you will not be allowed on their property. Um, I don't use my hard hat a great deal because I don't go to a lot of places that require them. Uh, if I loaded at Bellevue, Ohio, the other shipper uh, here for my dedicated account, I would use my hard hat on a daily basis because they require it every single time. They will ask you to leave if you do not have your hard hat uh, on your head. Some office supply type stuff. And I did a, a video on paperwork. Um, but probably the thing I use the most, small little notepad. I write down, and I'll show you in a second how I write it down. I think I did in that video as well. Um, each load that I do gets its own sheet of paper, has the, the, the trip number, the product, the trailer number, the pickup location, um, pickup number, uh, 
the receiver's location, how much I'm getting paid for the load, and a running total of how much I've made in a given week. And when I'm done with that load, I rip that sheet of paper off and it gets stapled to everything else. And pens to go along with. So, speaking of, a little stapler and staples. And that lives also up here. Where does all this stuff go? I have a metal box, a metal clipboard box. It's got a clipboard on the front. You see it's dented, it's been used every day for four years. It opens up. I keep, these are our trip sheets. Every sh trip you do requires to have one of these filled out. It just, all it says is what's your tractor number, that's how they identify you at Prime, what's the trip number, and then the information on where the load went. Behind this, I have some other paperwork. Um, I keep bills, such as um, if I've had work done on the truck, I'll keep receipts for that. Uh, I keep extra copies of, I think I've talked before about kosher certification. Uh, there is paperwork for kosher certification. Some customers require this paperwork. Um, and this is the, you know, it's signed by a rabbi. And these are for our trailers. And then it has a list of every trailer that Prime owns, that it is kosher certified as of a certain date. And some, like I said, some customers are gonna require that. Um, and so you need to have a couple extra copies of that. So that's the top, and then the bottom of this, these are trips that have been completed. So these are trips that have been filled out. There's that little notepad piece of paper. And then all the bills for a load, there's a bill of waiting, and there's a wash ticket. And I keep, you don't need to do it, but I happen to keep um, receipts for fuel that I have purchased. So that's what that, and at the end of every month, so at the end of this month, I'll take all of these home, and they go in a file folder at the house. So, a metal storage box. I also have a portfolio pad. This is specifically for driver advisory board. If I run into someone and they have a topic they would like me to talk about at Driver Advisory Board, I'm gonna write it down. I've got paperwork over here. This is where I keep the long form of my um, medical card and other stuff about the Driver Advisory Board. Keep copies of my business cards in case I run into somebody so I keep that in here. And this is just a simple portfolio pad. Got it at Walmart. Um, so that kind of goes through the office supply stuff. Um, more practical things that I have on a daily basis. I used to have two flashlights. Now I have one. Um, probably should buy another one at some point. <laughs> because... And I don't buy high quality, expensive flashlights because I lost the other one. Uh, because what I use flashlights for are, are two things. When you're walking around a trailer and you're doing a pre-trip inspection on a trailer, you're looking underneath the hood, a lot of the time it's dark. Um, these lots are not well lit. So you need a flashlight. If you're doing a repair, maybe you leave a flashlight on the fender of a trailer. Maybe you leave it on the ground as it's shining where you're doing your repair or whatever. Um, this is a Bell & Howell. These are at almost every Walmart. I think they're about 10 bucks. The other one I had is called a Fat Larry. Um, it's, it's a stick and then there's about a three, four inch LED bar um, on the end. Other thing I use this for is, uh, and I think I showed it in the hour pump video is checking that the impellers on our pumps are going in the proper direction. They need to be spinning this direction outwards to pump and inwards to suck product back into the trailer. Flashlight, very, and that just, I have a very bad habit of leaving certain items on my seat, my passenger seat, because they're readily accessible. So that lives on my passenger seat. Um, the next group of things are 
Tools that really don't have anything to do with doing the job. Medical scissors, medical shears. These you can cut a penny with. If you're not familiar with these at all, you can cut any number of things. 90% of the time I'm using them to cut open some sort of food. <laughs> a, a bag of potato chips, you know, and I'm, I'm eating while I'm driving and I cut the top of the bag, you know, so that it's half instead of whole. But you can use these for any number of things and it's so easy to use this instead of something else. These live in a little shelf right in the dash. Same shelf, similar use. This is a Leatherman Skeletool. This is one of the more simple Leathermans you can buy. It really only has four functions. It has a lock blade knife. It has a clip which doubles as a bottle opener. It has a set of pliers. And right here, it has a screwdriver. See, this is a Phillips bit. This simply pulls out a little release on the side. This pulls out, there's two Phillips bits and embedded in the side, right there, is a slotted screwdriver bit. So, um, I use this for any number of things. 90% of the time I'm using it for the knife. This is my pocket knife that I use. This also lives the same spot as the scissors right here. I have a second knife. And this is a cheap... There's some fit and finish issues with this. I think this is... Man, I probably had this for 10 years. Um... Keeps a lick and keeps on, <laughs> takes a lick and keeps on ticking, sort of thing. Uh, it's a husky. Um, I think this was maybe five dollars at Walmart. You can see it's kind of beat up. Um, I use this anytime I know that the knife might break or is going to get really dirty, and you can see it's dirty. Um, but it's it's one I don't want to destroy the the nice leather. <laughs> The, the nice Leatherman, I use my really crummy knife. Um, and there, there'll be times that you'll need a knife for something. Lives also up in the dash. If you've got knives, you want to keep them sharp. So a little knife sharpener. And the final knife that I have is a neck knife. Uh, I know people have mixed feelings about neck knives. Um... This is a cold steel neck knife. Um, it's called the Hideout. Um, I have this on here. This is my grandfather's dog tag from World War II when he was in the Navy. Uh, I, this is a knife that I wear around my neck, as the neck knife would indicate, and under my shirt. And the concept here is that if you're in a situation where you are buckled in and there's an accident or something and you cannot undo your seatbelt, you have easy access because these knives that I showed you in the dash, if you're in an accident, they can go flying anywhere. This one's not going anywhere you have some way to cut the seat belt. That's all, that's all I have it for. I don't have it specifically for self-defense. I have it to get myself out of the seat belt in case I need to get out of the seat belt. Um, last few items. Obviously have a wallet. Um, I happen to be a fan of, this is a Travax wallet. It's the first style of one they ever made. I don't remember what they call it. Um, a lot of places will ask for your driver's license to check in. 
also have my Prime ID, credit cards, all that stuff. Um, there's a Prime ID. Uh, you do need a Prime ID to pay for fuel. Even if you're a company driver, that's how you're going to pay for your fuel. Um, I know I've shown this before. This is... Can you tell what it is now? This is a tire pressure gauge. Um, if you come to Prime and you bring a tire pressure gauge from the vehicle you have at home, it maybe will go up to 50 PSI. Uh, this one goes to 150 PSI because your front tires are 110 PSI and your drive tires are 100 PSI. So that tire pressure gauge that you have for your home vehicle, your truck at home, your car at home, not going to do it. Um, these are available at any truck stop for 10 bucks something along those lines that lives again in a little shelf up top and the final thing is what started this somebody made a comment about my sunglasses I cannot live without sunglasses the Sun has come out it was raining earlier so I wear prescription sunglasses somebody made a comment about them um, and just as long as I'm showing glasses uh, I use these like they're going out of style. Five bucks at Walmart for a hundred of them uh, to clean your clean your glasses. Um, if you've worked inside most of your life, um, maybe you don't think sunglasses are important. I personally cannot live without sunglasses. Um, I've always had sunglasses, but somebody asked me about these. They they happen to like them. These are Oakleys. They are Flak 2.0s. Um, got them through lens crafters they will uh, order them from Oakley Oakley does their own lenses um, but it is probably besides you know GPS phone Bluetooth uh, it's probably next on my list of if I forget to bring my sunglasses it is gonna be a bad day for me um, I absolutely need them uh, you know, the sun came out and I, I was starting to squint quite a bit. I, I happen to wear sunglasses even when it's cloudy uh, quite a bit. Um, but that's what started this and that's what's going to end this video. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it interesting. Maybe nobody will care. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was a, a, an interesting topic um, of some of the things that I seem to use quite a bit. Um, hope you enjoy it. As always, link in the description of the video if you do want to come to Prime, take you right to the application. Thanks so much for watching. Give me some feedback if this is a type of video you uh, do find interesting, or if you have any more questions, or if there's a video you would like to see. Comment down below or send an email to that uh, address that I included in my videos. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys next time.